What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing my top tier list for jailbreak tools. Some of these are ones that I might not have personally really had much experience with, and some jailbreaks aren't here just because there's so many jailbreaks, the ones that really, really stand out are the ones that I picked. There's tiers from F tier, which is the worst possible tier, basically, all the way up to S tier, which is the best tier there is. The first jailbreak we're gonna rank is kinda of interesting, and one Twitter user actually said to Tim Starr, the developer of this jailbreak, what's going on with it, when ETA basically, without fully saying it, and Tim Starr actually responded back by saying, it'll happen, it just might take a little while. And then after he said that a year later, this jailbreak actually came out. The name of this jailbreak, of course, is the ETA Sun jailbreak, and this was really cool because it came out for a firmware that you know wasn't previously jailbreakable, and then it was. It took a little while for this one to come out. I think just because obviously there are some better jailbreaks on this list, as you'll see going on in the video, I think I'm probably going to put this at a C. I might move it later, but I think I'm going to keep this at a C because I did like this jailbreak. I thought it was cool, and there was an untether for this jailbreak, so I, I feel like in a way maybe I should bump it up to a B because I feel like, I, I think I might actually do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump this up to a B. The next one is something really awesome. If you don't know, you know, this was a thing back in the day in the community and people would have a ton of fun typing in the URL in Safari and just sliding the jailbreak. Obviously I'm talking about jailbreakme, jailbreakme.com. And this honestly, we're probably gonna have to do S tier. And that is honestly just because of the experience. The experience is just so cool. When you slide to jailbreak it, it's just so easy. You go on jailbreakme.com, you slide to jailbreak it, and then it's there and it's readily available to you. You know, City is on the home screen and it's an untethered jailbreak. Uh, it's something that we don't necessarily have nowadays. Uh, it really does remind me of the old days. So that's why I definitely think it deserves the S tier. This jailbreak came out in the early days of iOS 7. It was around the time where the evaders were looking towards iOS 7. That was where obviously all the efforts were focused on. 6.1.3 came out, this firmware, and it patched the original evasion jailbreak, so there needed to be another jailbreak that came out. So this jailbreak is POSIX phone that I'm talking about, and I think that because of the legacy, I think I'm going to put it at a B. I know I'm being a little picky when it comes to this, but S tier is obviously like the best jailbreaks there are, and I'm gonna try not to get that clouded up by nostalgia's sake. I think this one was untethered as well. So the jailbreaks that are untethered, I am probably going to move to B just because if it's an untethered jailbreak, I feel like it deserves at least a B tier. This was right off the cusp of when the evaders were pushing out a successful iOS 7 jailbreak. It was right at the end of that. Eventually got patched in 7.1. And so then it was kind of like, well, all right, well, now we have to wait for the evaders to go and release another jailbreak. We saw from a team that was previously unknown. We didn't know who these guys were. They just randomly came onto the scene. It was in Chinese. It wasn't native English like a lot of jailbreakers were used to seeing. That might be the reason why a lot of people were kind of nervous about it. And I remember I didn't know what to expect, but these guys, obviously they came a long way from where they were originally. And we're of course talking about the original Pangu jailbreak back on iOS 7.1. And I don't want this to be fully clouded up by nostalgia, but I'm going to say that this deserves an A tier because Pangu, I think, was a really good jailbreak. I think it was, you know, one of those jailbreaks that if you were in the community for it, you definitely, like, really remember it. And this was really cool. It was a summer jailbreak, and a lot of people kind of had their doubts. Like, is this real? Is this just another fake that gives you malware? And, you know, you, you try to go and jailbreak, and it makes you download some apps and, you know, walks you through surveys, like... What is this? Is this real? Is this legit? And then finding out that it is real, it is legit, was really cool. There would not be an OG style jailbreak without these guys. These guys came together and they released something awesome for two major iOS versions, for iOS 6 and for iOS 7. The Evasion 7 jailbreak was basically my first jailbreak that I was present for in the community. The Evaders, I feel like, did a really, really awesome job with Evasion as a whole and I don't think there's really anyone that could say anything bad about the evaders and about evasion itself. I don't, again, want nostalgia the cloud, my viewpoint of this, but I am going to give it an A. And I think that's probably fair. Honestly, I, I kind of even want to give it an S tier. I think I'm going to give it an S tier uh, just because 
the jailbreak was outstanding nostalgia wise and it's just that you know this is this jailbreak is what you really want in a jailbreak these types of experiences now you press the start button and then it was really easy i feel like i gotta give it an s tier so this jailbreak came out around ios 5 and I wasn't really around in the community at that point. I just wasn't. Of course, I am talking about the absinthe and green poison jailbreaks. And I want to put this at S tier, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm going to have a lot of S tier jailbreaks if I do that. So I feel like just me personally, because I didn't use this really as much, I'm going to put that as A tier. I know that's controversial. I don't really have that much experience with it. I have experience with it after the fact, and I think it was a really well-made jailbreak and a really good jailbreak, but I just don't know if I should give it an S tier because I really don't have that much experience with using it. This, of course, was sort of the legacy style era for these jailbreaks. So definitely an A tier. Uh, we'll see what happens with the rest of this list. So the next one that I'm going to talk about might be a little controversial in terms of where I decide to put this because I know a lot of people are going to say, well, considering it's not an untethered jailbreak, why would you put it on this specific tier? But I don't know, with just the way that everything panned out, it was a, the first jailbreak for like the latest firmware at the time for like a while. Uh, you know, of course, we're talking about 12.4 and the recent Uncovered jailbreak that came out for that. And of course, yeah, it was semi-untethered and it wasn't the fully untethered stuff that we're used to seeing with S-tiers. Uh, but I, I feel like because this was the first jailbreak in a very long time that had the latest possible firmware being jailbroken, I feel like I at least have to give that an A tier, but I feel like I kind of even want to give that an S tier. I mean, that was super cool, even though it wasn't a fully untethered jailbreak. And of course, you know, these two other ones that we have here were pretty much untethered jailbreaks. I think, honestly, that was super cool. For the first time in a very long time, the latest possible firmware was jailbroken. So I'm going to put that at S tier. It might be a little controversial. Now, this one came out shortly after Pengu released a few of their own jailbreaks, and uh, this one was interesting because there's no other Chinese company at the time besides Pangu that was doing anything jailbreak wise. So it was very interesting to see these guys come, you know, out from the woodworks, especially considering the fact that these guys had a million dollar deal with the evaders. All of a sudden, these guys do a 180 turn and decide to release their own jailbreak. Of course, we are talking about the Tai G jailbreak and the Tai G team. Now, this was really cool. It was a really cool experience, really cool point in time. However, I think I am going to have to give it a B tier because these guys, they jailbroke iOS 8, they jailbroke iOS 8.4, and then they kind of just mysteriously vanished from the community. Pangu obviously had multiple different releases and, you know, multiple major iOS versions. And so that's why I feel like definitely Pangu deserves A tier, but I don't know if I can justify Taiji getting A tier. So I think I'm going to have to put Taiji at B tier because I think that just makes the most amount of sense. This came out for iPhone OS 3, and it supported basically every firmware version all the way up until like iOS 6. This one has to be S tier. Like there's no other way with this boot ROM exploit, it supported this. Of course, I'm talking about Red Snow and Red Snow, honestly, I think has to go S tier. I mean, I don't think there's any other way to go about it. I think Red Snow definitely has to go S tier because you look at the various different things that Red Snow was. It wasn't just a jailbreak tool. You could, you know, restore and downgrade to custom firmwares. There were so many things that you could do uh, with Red Snow and with this boot ROM exploit that it was so cool. And honestly, I think it, it without a doubt, definitely has to be an S tier. So the actual boot ROM exploit itself, obviously, again, has to be S tier. Of course, we're talking about Lime Rain, the jailbreak tool itself. This came out on iOS 4 and this one definitely has to be S tier as well. It was, it was really cool. And you could have this device jailbroken for life no matter what. That definitely has to be S tier. Now, the next thing is going to be slightly controversial. And of course, that's because this was the very first semi-untethered jailbreak. When this came out, a lot of people were scratching their heads and they were like, you install it and it's an application that you install and you go into the application, you tap a button and it lets you jailbreak. But then the app, it's not fully untethered because then the app expires. So you have to make sure that every seven days you resign it or you have a developer account for $99 a year. So there probably are a lot of people that might disagree with this, but of course I'm talking about Pangu 9.3.x. This was the very first semi-untethered jailbreak, and I don't want to put it in S tier because I don't know if it really deserves S tier. 9.3.x was so different from all the other Pangu versions and all the other jailbreaks itself, period, that I felt like I kind of had to uh, make it its own category, make it its own thing. So that is going to stay at A tier. 
And uh, I think that's probably pretty fair. And last but not least, you guys knew I was going to talk about it. This is the latest in the series of jailbreaks that we've gotten. And this has, in many ways, revitalized the community. Um, you know, Axiom came on Twitter one day and just decided to randomly drop this boot ROM exploit. And it was insane. It was crazy. And the last boot ROM jailbreak we got, the last boot ROM exploit we got was Lime Rain. And it was Red Snow. Those were the last two big boot ROM things that we got. Lime Rain was the past jailbreak that we got that, you know, was the boot ROM exploit. That was the last big major thing that we got. And that was like a 10 year gap. Of course, I am talking about Check Rain. And uh, I think I really have to give this an S tier. I mean, I, I really think I do. It deserves S tier because the boot ROM exploit itself is what makes it deserve S tier, honestly. I mean, the jailbreak itself works all the way from the 5S to the iPhone 10. And the exploit works from the 4S to the iPhone 10. So this covers an insane amount of devices. And this makes all of those devices jailbreakable for life. And, you know, it's crazy because it's crazy to think about. It's a concept that hasn't been explored since the days of Lime Rain and since the days of Red Snow. It, it hasn't been explored in forever. So it's really cool that, you know, it is something that was just even explored to begin with. And everything down from the UI, you know, the way that the device boots up, when you jailbreak it, I mean... Obviously, there is DFU mode, so it's not, like, perfect, perfect. And same thing for Lime Rain and Red Snow. Like, it's DFU mode. But honestly, that brings back a ton of nostalgia, especially if you were around in the community with the Lime Rain days. You'll remember that. And honestly, it's really not that bad because although, yes, you do have to have a computer for right now, there are people that obviously are working on different methods to not need a computer, you know, building a case or doing anything like that to that extent. And honestly, I don't know. I think that this list is probably pretty fair. And I think that this is probably a, a pretty good tier list. I think that all of the S tiers definitely deserve their spot on the S tier rank. And I don't necessarily think any jailbreak deserves an F tier because all these jailbreaks, when you think about it, they're all jailbreaks. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm curious, what do you guys think about this video? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, if you want me to do any more tier list videos, whether it's, you know, tier list of jailbreak tweaks, I was thinking about potentially doing that. I'm not sure. If anyone else, if any other YouTuber decides that they also want to do a jailbreak tier list, by all means, you know, you guys should do it. I'd be very curious to see what everyone else's tier list would be. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Also, go ahead and go down below and subscribe and turn that post notification bell on. That way, you never miss out on a brand new video. And also, you want to make sure that you're following me on all my social medias linked down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, have a good one, guys. Peace.